Hey guys. You know, is it me or is it weird, unusual, and the I didn't think they would do it, or I don't I didn't think they would incorporate it. Is that becoming the new You know, is that becoming the new trend in Hollywood? When it comes to movies and if not live action shows, is it becoming a new trend where something that maybe you normally would see in animation or you would normally read about in fan fiction, if not in comics, if they decide to add that? Is it becoming the norm that nowadays you're starting to see more of it in Hollywood and movies and shows? I mean, I understand sometimes it's necessary because if you're adapting something, it needs you need to incorporate some variation of it. But sometimes there are movies that come out that are not based on anything, or if they are, they're very loosely based and they become more of an original film on its own, that you wouldn't expect them to go in a direction like what they've done, especially with the actors or actresses, and mostly from what I've seen, it's been actresses being put into these roles, you wouldn't expect them to do it. Because you would think they would come off and say, yeah, the character sounds great, but the role you want me to do and everything sounds a little weird. Or, you know, they would, you know, there, would be, there would be some actresses that would be like, I'm not too sure about that. Or some actors that would be like, I'm not too sure about that. But yet they would do it. They would do it because, well, one... The character's background and all that sounds appealing. And of course there's the money. And hey, they have nothing else to do, do uh, movie-wise. They need, they need, I guess, a job, so there you go. But still, it's like, who would have expected certain movies in the past several years to go in directions no one would have expected? I mean, take, I'll give you an example. One of the, a couple of the movies I own is like, well, for example, Lucy, which had Scarlett Johansson in it. And if you've seen the movie, you kind of see what I'm talking about when it comes to the fact that, whoa, I didn't think this movie would go in the direction it has, especially with the ending. And now with the promise that we're getting a sequel, a follow-up, it makes you wonder how they're going to do that, since at the end of the film, the main character pretty much exploded, not death-wise, but exploded and became part of the universe itself, a part of the world itself. Basically indicating to a fellow protagonist, I'm everywhere. So... How the heck are you going to incorporate a sequel when the character pretty much is everywhere? How weird are you going to get with that? How weird, how f freaking crazy are they going to get with the sequel considering they got crazy, if you will, with the first one? I mean, heck, you have a little kind of exploding a little bit or falling, coming apart, going to becoming molecules and all that, having a melt, kind of semi melt into. Well, and spread into a black goop or what? I mean, who would have thought you'd see that kind of stuff in today's movies? Especially with today's top actors and actresses. No one. No one would have expected it. And now you got the potential of a sequel, which is going to expand on what happens. The question is, how the heck do you expand on that? How weird are you going to get? How crazy are you going to get? Heck, I'll give you another example, and this is based off a fairy tale, or spun off from the established fairy tale, The Huntsman, The Huntsman's War, or whatever it's called. The follow-up to Snow White and The Huntsman. The Huntsman's War, The Huntsman's movie, which didn't do so well, brings back the queen, brings back uh, the evil queen, right? Charlie, Charlie Theron's uh, character. 
But the way they bring her back is it indicates she has somehow merged with the mirror and now she has the ability now and the way she's brought back is not only she's summoned from the mirror, but she's su- but she's brought back but she's basically brought back in the same way she's summoned the essence of the mirror originally. She's brought back as a goopy po- as a go- some kind of slimy goop that emerges out of there, flows towards the ice queen, starts to reconstitute itself into the evil queen. And then how does she die? Die at the end? The huntsman basically shatters the mirror. She yells, gets tur- turns into gold. It looks like she's going to melt down, and she kind of semi-melts a little bit and then falls apart. Now that part, becoming a statue and falling apart, aren't dying, that's expected, yes, sometimes in films, but still. But still, you know, having the evil queen now become the gooey essence of the mirror, and that's the way she's reconstituted, she comes flowing out of it, it's like... Who would, have thought, who would have thought that one day you'd go and see a Charlie Sterling movie and the next thing you know you see her coming out as a, you see her emerging out of a, an inanimate object as a golden gooey, po- a gooey puddle of, flowing puddle of goo or whatever. I don't think none of us would. Just like none of us would have expected Lucy, uh, Scarlett Johansson to be in the title role of Lucy and get what we did there. But then you take a look at another film, Valeria. I think it was called Valeria and the planet and the city of a thousand planets, or the planet of a thousand cities. I think that's what it's called. Or the city of a thousand planets. So you take a look at Valeria and the city of a thousand planets, and you're thinking, okay, it's by the guy that did the Fifth Element. And some other films as well. The Element. I think he did Lucy as well. They're thinking, okay, fine. It's no big deal. But then you remember, when you go back and watch those films, The Fifth Element and Lucy most recently, I think he also did Lucy, you're like, oh, wait a minute, this guy can do the unusual. This guy's main... These guys, the people behind the Fifth Element and Lucy and any other film, any other film or series associated, when you watch those, you kind of get the idea of, oh, I know what's going to happen here. I see what the you know track record's about. And then when you watch Valer- Valhalla, I think that's what's called Valhalla in this city of a thousand planets, you kind of get the idea. Yes, it looks like it starts out normal and everything, but then you get to a certain moment in the film where you take an established multimedia actress, singer-actress, in this case Rihanna, and you cast her as a shape-shifting blob of an alien. Now, I don't know if she melts into a... she becomes a puddle of goo during the film or what. I don't know. I have to look through it. But basically, she can shapeshift her body into any form she wants. And you're thinking, okay, cool. A blobby, six, four tentacle alien that can shapeshift. Or a gooey, blobby alien that could probably melt, become a puddle or whatever. And that can shapeshift herself into any form she wants. Okay, fine, cool. You, wouldn't ex- you would expect that. What you wouldn't expect is that she's able to merge herself with whoever she's around and help them disguise themselves. Yeah. That's one of her powers. That's one of the powers that Rihanna's character in Valara Valara in the City of a Thousand Planets has. She can merge herself with somebody. She can flow over to some, onto somebody and shape sh- and use ba- basically she can merge with somebody and help shape shift them into a disguise that's needed. Yeah, she does that. And you wouldn't expect someone like Rihanna to take the, on that kind of a role, but then again, she did do the sledge her sledgehammer song, her not a remake, but her version of a sledgehammer song for Star Trek's for the recent Star Trek movie. And if you saw her music video on that, you would get the idea that this is not, this is not new territory to her. But still, it's like who would have expected Rihanna to be in the role that she was in 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 that movie. 
you know, in Valara, the city of a thousand planets. Who would have thought she would have accepted the role to be ca accepted to be cast in the role of of that character, of a shape shifting, gooey, blobby, slime like six tentacle, four tentacle character that can not only shape shift into any form she wants, but literally merge with anybody around her and help them shape shift into whatever they want or into whoever they need to be. I mean. Who would have thought that? Who would have thought she would have done that? This is why one has to wonder if weird and the unexpected and I didn't see that coming is the new is the new direction, is the new trend in Hollywood. Because nowadays you could pretty much go to DeviantArt, fanfic, fanfiction.com or .org, whatever it is, adultfanfiction.org if you go there. You know, G4, uh, G4.arion.com, Echo's Portal, if you will, um, Fun Finian, So Furry, you name it. Like I say, Divin Art. You can go there and you notice that there are groups based on transformations, goo, uh, goo gals, slime girls. Slime transformations, goo transformations, shape shifting, you know, melting into pu melting into gooey puddles for fun. There's all kinds of fan fiction, fan works groups, and all that at DeviantArt and other places, even the Yahoo groups that are that are dedicated to these kind of tropes, dedicated to these trends, if you will, that Hollywood seems to be going down. So it makes you wonder, what do they have planned next? Because, like I said, they got a Lucy 2 coming out, but how the heck are you going to do a second Lucy when pretty much the main protagonist pretty much stated at the end of the film, she's everywhere now. How, how, how are you going to do that? You know? You know how, how in the world are you going to do that? It doesn't make any sense. I mean, the only way they're going to end up doing that is to get as crazy and as crazy and as unusual than before. I mean, if you have Scarlett Johansson's character pretty much proclaiming she's everywhere, basically she's everywhere, but in a sense she's everything, what's to say that you can't just play around with it? Let's say the guy wants to communicate with Lucy. One of the, I think, ideas that we got is she can now merge with anything because she's everywhere or everything, right? Who's to say you won't have a scene in the second Lucy movie where the guy tries to communicate with Lucy and you see this computerized face of Lucy come up on the screen you know, of the computer and then shapeshift that and then because the plot may call for it or the scene may call for it, she shapeshifts into different things that are disgusting to kind of get an idea of what they have to do. Who's to say they won't go in that direction? Again, again, Lucy 2 creates the possibility of who knows what the heck they're going to do with the premise that they're going to come up with. I mean, heck, nowadays, nowadays, you could take someone's stories, like let's say, um, Grape Athenia, Grape Athenia, or, or Grape Hythenia. She is someone I would commission stories from for a while, and maybe I need to go back to doing that soon. I just don't know when. And I don't know if she's doing it anymore herself. She probably is, because she still writes stories, but we haven't seen any commission work in a while. So we'll, I'll have to find, we'll, have to, we'll see what happens in the future. Uh, but anyway... I helped her through my commissions create what is known, the, known as the potions place and the potions in place universe in on her divan art. I'm the one. I'm basically the one that commissioned her for some stories that were similar in tone, oh, and sound like I was doing the same thing over again. But she helped through her creativeness sculpt them to be something more. So. And then, so it makes you wonder if you'd go to her website, to her DeviantArt page, age, it makes you wonder if maybe someday you won't see something like that on the big screen. Heck, take a look at, uh, what is it, Ty, Tyle Greywolf. Tyle Greywolf has been doing stories for a while. He did a series called Bottle of Dreams. 
In fact, he even decided to expand on what Kaipathenia and myself, through my commissions to her, created by creating a series called The Ultimate Potion Vacation. The Ultimate Potion Vacation, which expanded on the Potions in Place universe at Great Pathenia's uh, DeviantArt page. And it focused on, care, on, the care, on two characters. One of the established characters from the stories that Great Pathenia and myself helped sculpt. Well, she did most of the work, but I helped with the commissions of the stories and stuff and you kind of get the idea but he expanded on them by incorporating a new character called Ryan and you just have to read these stories to see exactly what I'm talking about but he dedicated about 12 chapters if you will, 12 parts to this and by dedicating 12 parts to this, 12 so by creating 12 parts to this, and I say by creating 12 parts to this, he helped expand in a major way on that universe. But Great Pathenia has also created her own stories, which is called What Dreams May Become. And the way she's crafted those out, the point, the way she's captured those out, you just have to watch and see to believe, but the point I'm making, the point I'm making is nowadays, they could probably sell or try to sell those stories to some person in Hollywood or studio in Hollywood to try to get a movie, maybe a series created. And you know what could happen? It'd probably become a reality. Because like I said, nowadays... Nowadays, as if you will, it's the new trend. It's the new trend when you take a look at Valera, Lucy, and a few other films. It's like the new trend. Heck, you want another example? How about the independent film The Congress? You gotta check this one out, but basically it combines live action. It's like the first part of it's live action, the other part's animation. But you want to talk about go, but you want to talk about not expecting them to go in directions you wouldn't expect it of in the past. That's what they do here. I mean, we know Japan could get crazy and unusual and all that with their films, live action or anime or whatever. But but for Hollywood to go in that direction is saying something. It really is. And I understand some people will say, well, Brian, it's not really that big of a big of a deal. It's been done before. Yeah, I'm not saying that Hollywood hasn't done something similar or close to this in the past. I'm not saying that. You know, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying she didn't do something in the past. I'm not saying that. Sorry, I lost track there, but I'm not saying they didn't do anything like that in the past. The point the point is, and again, I'm sorry if I lost track. I was looking at something. But like I said, the point is, I'm not saying they haven't done anything like that in the past. But the point is that you see it more so nowadays than ever before. And it's like an old saying goes. It's like the old saying. Today's writers, directors, and producers grew up during a time when some of this stuff was kind of new, but intriguing. It was. I'll give you an example. There is a writer called Edgebreak. I think this is the one who created the story. But Edgebreak created a three-part fan fiction story called Hitmoto, or Hitomoda, or Hitomoa, or whatever it's called. But basically it focused on this girl discovering that she has this ability to do something she's never done before. That she's part of something that she didn't think she was. The ability is she's able to liquefy her body into a puddle of goo. And she's able to do whatever she wants with it. Heck, she can even, for a better term, absorb other uh, characters around her with the same ability and add them to their, her mass, or add them to her body, uh, add them to her mass, and they wouldn't mind it. It's like you, basically, it explores this whole society 
Six. This whole society ex- explodes this whole society that's kind of unknown to the human world. It is. I mean, there are scenes in, there are moments in these stories to where even the main protagonist herself will end up uh, be, uh, flowing into or being absorbed by another. And at first, she doesn't mind it. And, and basically, at first, she doesn't mind it because there's one, uh, one, um, uh, what is it, one, there's one narration put it, it felt natural, it didn't, it felt natural for her to be in that state after she was absorbed. It felt natural for her. So here you have a three part story that was created, mostly seen at Yahoo groups. And you can see elsewhere, people have provided the links. I'm sure people, if you find it, I'll even say what it is in the description if you Google it. Uh, basically, you have this character or the society that have these gooey, slime like melting down into puddle absorbing powers. And then the way the third one end, ends is really unusual. Because you have a character being introduced that does almost the exact same thing, but then grants the power to two ordinary characters, two ordinary females. But then what they do is they use the power to kind of flow into each other, if you will, and become a freaking Harley Davidson and shapeshift themselves into Harley Davidson. I mean, this kind of in this kind of story, three part story, maybe multiple part story, is something that if Hollywood was to get their hands on it, or if it was presented to a Hollywood studio, like Lion Gates or Twenty or like Lion Gates or or Disney's or the soon to be Disney Fox division for all we know, or what have you, Universal. Warner Brothers, if they were to present this story to them, especially with the fact that today, like I said, nowadays the trend is to basically, you know, do whatever. You know, the trend is basically to, well, not do whatever, but basically the trend is to get as crazy as it needs to be, to get as unusual and weird as necessary to help tell the story. Then this right here, this. Hitomo or Hitomura, again, I'll provide the link if I can get it or even the name of it. If this series by, I think it was Edgebreak, is any example of what could be done, the possibilities are endless. They are. Especially in today's trend for Hollywood studios to take the weird and unusual and use that to tell a story or to craft a story. Heck, even if you want to get into the adult situation of the matter, the adult situation, there's even stories that have been written before by people like uh, Gavin Alois, uh, uh, Gavin Alois, or it's Gavin, but his last name is A-L-U-S, or something like that. Yeah, by Gavin Alois, that tells the stories of a, les- of a lesbian couple and one of them is a princess that has this power to turn into whatever she wants or whoever she wants and I think the same could be said for her lover or whatever or maybe not, I'm not really sure but basically it's the princess that's what she's proclaimed as a princess and she's able to turn into anyone they want and they role play with it so and it's called Tale of the Bunnies or something like that. And again, if you want to go on the adult perspective, that pretty much you sell that to a studio that probably has a decent budget behind it to do adult films, especially with special effects. There you go. The point is nowadays to see Hollywood studios and even adult Hollywood studios go in this direction is a surprise. Heck, so, heck, it's, uh, how do I put this? There was word, heck, someone mentioned to me that there's a, heck, someone mentioned at a, one of the form, at a message board, I can't, I don't know if it was G4's message board, Echo's Portal's message board, or, or one of the journals or blogs I saw at DeviantArt, but someone mentioned that there was an, a, 
adult uh, film that was on one of the premium channels. I don't know if it, what channel it was. And basically it dealt with availability. And they said, according to someone that told them, there was a scene or several scenes where the main protagonist becomes invisible, which is a female. The main protagonist gets it on with the male and female uh, compatriots or allies or friends of hers. She gets it on with them while she's invisible or she turns invisible while she gets it on with them or something like that. I don't know. But the point is, if you have something like that being touched upon by adult studios, adult Hollywood studios, again, and that's what, within the recent year or two, it shows you the trend that Hollywood, no matter what side of Hollywood you look at, in the movie, movie and television business is going down. The point is, and I know this has been going on for long, so I do apologize. The point is... It seems to me that Hollywood is going down a direction, going down a path that's more of a, how do I put this, is more of a path you wouldn't thought they would go in, not even that long ago, but now we're seeing it. So the question is, what's next for them? Will they look on stories at DeviantArt, fan fiction, wherever, and look at the and basically look at some of the stories that I've mentioned, like Great Pathenia's "What Dreams May Become," "What Dreams May Become," or the potion placed in Gina Universe, whatever it's called, potion of the place universe that, through my commission and other people's commissions, were crafted and sculpted by Great Pathenia herself. Where they look at Tyle Greywolf's stories of his bottle bottle of dreams. A story arc, or his expansion of what Great Bithynia did with Ultimate Potion Vacation. Heck, when they go to Echo's Portland portal and look at Crime Zero Edge's The Great Herdini stories, or stories similar to that. Where they go to, where they go and search out Edge Break's egg story of uh, Edge Break's Hitomara, Hitomara, Hitomara story, or whatever the name is, and go with that. No one really knows what direction they plan to go in, but the point is this. The point is this. Whatever they decide to do, whatever direction they decide to go in, I can say this, without a shadow of a doubt, that the next several years, the next decade or so, so <laughs> easy for me to say, the next decade or so of movies if not shows in Hollywood, either you watch them on the big screen through sites like Amazon, through services like Amazon, Netflix, or you watch them on networks like ABC, CBS, CW, Freeform, you name it, HBO, Showtime. It's basically guaranteed that within the next several years, if not the next decade, you're going to see more of these kind of films, films with this kind of a trend coming out, more, more films, more shows with this kind of trend that we have seen be used in, in movies like Lucy, Valera, uh, Valhalla, Valhalla, if you will, and many others. You're going to start seeing it coming out more so than ever. And you're going to start seeing some of maybe, won't put it past me, you start seeing some stories that you read on DeviantArt. You read at fanfiction.com or .net or whatever. You're going to start seeing those become reality on the big screen. Heck, there are two people that do a webcomic at times or well, several people that do webcomics at times, that have good plot points to it. Oh, and guess what? Don't be surprised if you see those get adapted in the future. Like Mr. Internet Man has his mystical makeover series in his Veronica DeMonica character, and now he's added on a new character with similar power, with the almost same identical powers. Don't be surprised if someone sees that in Hollywood and says, Hey, Mr. Internet Man, you want to make this into a show or into a movie? Who would pass that up? Or what about Caboozle? Or 
Kyle Hedgy, or whatever her name is. They have these characters that they work with, these slime girl characters, called Cat, Furrow, and Fodura, or whatever. Don't be surprised if, their char- if someone sees that series of comics on DeviantArt and elsewhere and say, hey, would you like to make that into a show or a movie? Don't be surprised. Because you know what? I wouldn't put it past the people that created these, the men- people I've mentioned, or even someone in Hollywood to approach in some Hollywood studio, or television studio, or whatever, streaming service studio, to approach them and say, hey, how would you like to make that into a show or a movie? The fact is, folks, we are in this error. The fact is, folks, we're in the error where that is going to be a possibility more so than ever. And I wouldn't put it past Hollywood. I wouldn't. Heck, there's a guy called uh, Cronin, Cronin or something like that, that does monster and goo, slime girl um, uh, artwork, if not comics, with established characters, if not original characters. You can't tell me that Hollywood, if they see what he, do, he does, won't want to pro- approach him someday and say, hey, you want to adapt some of these scenarios into films or series? Again, who would pass it up? Nobody. The point is, folk, the point is, we are in an age right now where if you would have thought we'd get an Infinity War movie the likes that we're going to get next year and the following year with its direct sequel, if someone would have told you 10, 10 or 11 years ago that that was going to happen, you wouldn't have believed them. You wouldn't have. You would have thought, nah, there's no way. There's no way they can assemble a cast that big. And even when word started to trickle down that it was going to happen, you still had your doubts until finally, look what's happening. It's being considered probably the biggest movie ever created, created in Hollywood history because of the fact that because of the large amount of cast of characters. That's what it is. Because the large amount of large cast of amount of characters and the story itself. You're looking when you combine both stories, and the possible average runtime for Infinity War could be two and a half hours, nearly three maybe, mostly two and a half. But if you take a look at that, and then you take a look at the other two and a half, which the sequel could end up having, and guess what? Guess what? There is a possibility that you're going to get it combined together, a nearly six-hour film, or six-hour story that expands two films. No one ever thought that would happen, and even when it got mentioned, people probably in Hollywood thought it, would, it was crazy to be done, but guess what? It's happening. It is happening. Disney and Marvel are putting all their eggs into this basket to see if it pays off, and obviously, it's going to. The fact of the matter is, folks, just because you may think something may never happen in Hollywood, don't put it past them. Don't put it past any studio in Hollywood, television or movie. Don't put it past them to not make it happen, because they will. And don't put it past any of them that might see what you do online and say, hey, I want to hire that person on, or I want to buy that story and bring it to the big screen, or bring it to the television screen. Don't be surprised, because like I said, we are now in the era where anything is possible. Anything is possible. So don't put it past them because this is truly the time and place. This is truly the time and error of the weird, the unexpected, the unusual, and basically, I didn't see that coming kind of deal. So, that's basically all I wanted to say. I know this went long, I do apologize, but I had to get this off my chest. But, yeah, this is definitely, when you take a look at movies like like the City of a Thousand Planets and Lucy and the f- upcoming Lucy 2 movie possibly to see how crazy they may get there. I wouldn't put it past Hollywood. I wouldn't put it past any studios. It was, you know, I wouldn't put it past them to get any crazier than they have already. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. So, so really, that's, that's all I'm going to say, folks. Let me know what you think down below. 
I'll just, if you've read in the description already, hopefully you've taken your time listening to this. But let me know what you guys think down below. Comment if you like. And I am out.